we're going to be in a couple different areas today. Today's a little bit different kind of message, and I understand that. But we'll, you'll understand why by the time that we're finished. Once again, right after service today, we're having a congregational meeting. So if you want to stay around and talk, you're more than welcome to do outside. We're going to be having a meeting in here for anybody that has questions on the Constitution bylaws and the um, statement of faith that we are looking to go to here in a couple weeks. Um, before, we, before we do that, I'm going to ask you a question. This is a question that I posed on Wednesday night. And you get a minute to think about it. You don't get to talk to the person next to you. It's this your answer is your answer, and there's no wrong answer. Like, if you choose wrong, you're not going to hell kind of thing. Okay, I just want to make sure if you choose right, you're going to heaven. It's not, not one of those kind of things. Would you rather spend 40 days in the desert, desert or wilderness, depending on the Bible verse you have, without any food? like Jesus, or spend three days in the belly of a whale slash big fish, depending on your version, like Jonah. Just think about it. Don't raise your hand yet. Would you rather spend 40 days in the desert or wilderness with no food, like Jesus, or would you rather spend three days in the belly of a whale or big fish, depending on your version, like Jonah? Think about it. Think about it. See, my turn to really worship there. Would you like anything more? More combo. Think about it. Just think about it. Come out of it. All right. We're, we're going to take a poll now. All right. Everyone, is anybody not having their answer? Anybody confused about the two possibilities? All right. Here we go. So, who would rather spend the 40 days in the wilderness? Wow. Okay. Put your hands down. Who would rather spend the three days in the belly of a whale? Okay, most of the students decided that they would rather spend, so what we would do is we'd ask the question, and then we'd say, okay, whoever chose this, go to this side, and then the other side, they were to give their argument to see if they could sway them. And there was, there was only one time where someone got swayed the entire night, and we didn't just ask biblical questions, we asked questions about real life stuff and all those other kind of things as well, but we also put up these, these scenarios. So, most of the kids would rather spend the three days in the belly of the whale, and the reason for that is they're like, it's just 72 hours. But the people that didn't were like, there's where I, I, I can't swim, I don't like to swim, um, it's gonna be dark in there, uh, I, you know, all the acid could change me. For those of you who don't know, that when, when Jonah was walking the streets of Nineveh, it was kind of like, you know, dead man walking kind of thing, because the acid, they say, changed his skin color. So he was like, bleached white, and so I was like, there's a dead guy walking, we probably should listen to what he has to say, and that kind of thing. So people were like, you know, I don't want to bled, you know, blemish my beautiful skin. Those are the girls, of course, you know, and that kind of stuff. But they were like willing to take their chances with, with, uh, with the whale at the end of the day. The 40 days was just too much for them, except for those that, you know, didn't like to swim. Now, here's the other side, are you ready? Would you rather, would you rather spend 40 days in the desert with no food, like Jesus, or 40 days on the ark where it's raining day and night, and remember, you're spending those 40 days with your in-laws. <laughs> because that's in the Bible, right? I wasn't going to ask, but okay, i got to ask. All right, here we go. Who would rather spend the 40 days now in the desert? And who would rather spend the 40 days in the ark? Okay, this is with the in-laws. Does everyone understand that? Okay, I just want to make sure. Okay, sometimes we're posed with questions where we have to look at things, and we're, we're forced to make an answer. And the reason that we do this with the youth, and we've done this the last couple weeks, is to not only ask that question, but to say, hey, listen, there's times you have to stand up to your faith and be able to identify not only which answer you choose, but possibly why. And so we separated and they had to come up with the answer, and they weren't allowed to say, oh, what he said or what she said. They had to come up with their own answer, write it down, and then and actually share that with us. And it's important to be able to do that when it comes to our faith. And so our church has literally, I don't know if we've been 40 days in the desert or if we've been 40 days in, on the rain, but we've been going through a rough time. We've been going through a really, really difficult time. And I believe that the reason that we're going through this rough time is because 
We are, we are under a document that is not focused on the right document. And, and the, the right document, this should be the document that we're focused on. This should be the one that we're, that we're following, and this should be the, the guidance that we have that each step of the way. But at the same time, it's not this one, this one. But at the same time, we have to have things that are in place so that we have a place to go to guidance-wise because there are things that, that, that from a church standpoint, that, okay, what about this, what about that? But we want to be able to point as much as we can to the Scripture. So our focus for the next, I don't know how many years, is the first thing is that we need to change the document that we're under right now. And so just to give you a little bit of history, the document we are under right now was passed in 2005. And this church in 2005 was going through a change. At the time, it was the first Clinton Church of Christ. You may see that on some Bible around here. And what had happened was the, the Church of Christ had accepted homosexual leadership in the leadership. And the church said, we don't agree with that. And so they broke free from the Church of Christ denomination and became non-denominational. With that, they changed the name to High Point Christian Church. And that was a decision they made. So they put in a document. And that document was the new bylaws and constitution. And if you go through that document, it, for what was written at that time, that was what was needed. But it's, it's 12 years old, and things have changed a lot, a lot, a lot. Now, the one thing that hasn't changed is this, but the problem is, is that the old document, the way it's set up, it pits two sets of leadership against one another, which should never happen. I have preached one thing since I've gotten here, and that is, do not, do not get focused on a man. The central verse of the Bible is, put your trust in, it's better to put your trust in God than your confidence in man. Psalm 118.8. And I've shared that with you. But too many times, we get focused on well, that guy and that guy, or that gal and that gal, and their power there and their power there. And once we start focusing on, I want my way, and it has to be my way, and this is about power, we're stuck. Because guess who's taken out of the equation at that point? God is. And we put ourselves ahead of that. And so that message will never change as long as I'm here that you can't put your trust in me. I'm going to fail you. And for some of you, I'm going to fail you directly, and I don't mean to. Some of you, I'm going to fail you directly, and it's going to be in your mind. Some of you, I'm going to, I'm, I, I may not be the person to fail you. Someone else is going to fail you. But we have to put it in place so that we can be a church that is going to be focused on love. That's it. If you narrow the Bible down to two directives that Jesus gave us, it is to love others as Christ loved others and to make disciples in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And if we're separate from any of those things, we're not doing what we're called to do. So the first thing that you will notice that in our new set of Constitution and Bylaws is that the head of the church is the Lord Jesus Christ. And the guiding force for that authority is his Bible. Period. The head of the church is the Lord Jesus Christ. And the authority by which we will go as a church is going to be the Bible. See, one of the other questions we asked this week, and this is a would you rather, would you rather come in and hear a message where you laugh a lot? Would you rather come in and hear a message you can learn a lot? And I thought the teenagers might get split. Every single teenager was like, I want to learn. And this is what they want to learn. There's a desire that each one of us has. And if we're not learning from this, and we're not diving into this enough, and we're not making this a part of our life, the bottom line is we're going to put ourselves ahead of it, and we're going to miss out what God wants for each one of our lives. Is it nice to laugh? Yeah, it's good to laugh at times. But we need to be learning as we're going through. So this is the kind of church that we're going to be moving forward if we pass this Constitution and bylaws. We're going to be a church that lives on faith, hope, and love. We just did a series on this. If you guys missed it, you can go online and watch it. Faith, hope, and love. You know why? Because these three things remain. And the greatest of these is love. Faith, not just saying I have faith, but taking my faith to people and showing it to people. Caring for them, sharing with them. Saying hello to the guy on the side of the road. Maybe picking someone up that's a little bit shady. I'm not saying necessarily to do that. Helping people with their groceries. Holding open a door. Smiling at someone. Living your faith in the small moments. Asking, can I help out? <coughs> Lending a hand. Whatever it might be. Wherever God has put you that day. Being willing enough to say, listen, I've got a plan for my day, but I'm going to put the pause button because all of a sudden somebody needs help. And being willing to do so. But my plan was this, and this is what I had, and here's my schedule, and I'm so busy, and all these things are going on, and God's bringing this person after person after person that needs a smile, that needs a hug, 
that needs someone to say hello. See, that's faithfulness. That's being full of faith to take it to people. And then hope, not just sitting back and waiting. Man, I, I hope, I hope my husband turns around. I hope my wife turns around. I hope my kids will listen. I hope that I get a job. No, 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 we're not going to sit back. Hopefulness, we're going to be full of hope. We're going to bring others hope. And what we find is that by being faithful and bringing hope, that we get those things in return. Which leads us to this. And the bottom line is this, is that the greatest of these is love. God's love pours through us, and we pour that into other people. So how are we going to do it? How are we going to do it? Here's the easiest way. This is the step we're taking. You got a Bible? Hold it up. Do you want, want to grab it in front of you? Hold it up. You ready? This is going to be our focus. Right here. Learn it. Live it. Love others with it. Learn it. Live it. Love others with it. What is it? It is the good news. It is being faithful. Taking faith to people. It's being hopeful. Bringing them hope. All of it through love. And it's easy to do it. Repeat after me. Learn it. Live it. Love others with it. We can take that wherever it is that we go. Hey, where do you go to church? I go to High Point Christian Church. Oh, yeah? You like it there? Yeah, I like it there. What do you like the best by? I like Tamar. <laughs> really? Yeah, me too. Why? Because she's nice. I like nice people. That's why I go to church there, because of nice people. There's a lot of people that feel there are a lot of nice people that go here. But part of the reason I like Tamar, you know why? Because she learns from God's word. She lives God's word, and she loves other people of God's word. Why do you go to church here? Because of Lisa? Really? Because of Lisa? Yeah. She's kind of weird. Yes. <laughs> I love when my wife laughs. One of my favorite things in the world. When I go into a room, I don't go into a, hey, has anybody seen Deanna? I go, Rebecca. I go, has anybody heard Deanna or Rebecca? Because that laugh to me is just a case I love. It. Anyway, all right, let's back to being Lisa weird. She's a little weird. Yeah, she's a little weird, but you know what? You know what Lisa does? She learns it. She lives it. She loves others with it. Loves others with it. What is it? What do you mean she loves others with it? She loves people because God loves her. She lives before them in such a way that people can see her faith, her hope, and her love. And it's because she takes the time to learn from God's word. One of my friends who many years ago, he is now, he's now a deacon of this church. He would come in, and the first time he was at church, he would just sit there with his coffee. And every week he would come to me to go. Learned something new today. Three weeks in a row I've been here. Learned something new today. Eight weeks in a row I've been here. Twelve weeks in a row. Sixteen weeks in a row. And now he just, he's here all the time. I, there's never a time he doesn't smile. There's never a time where he doesn't hug me. There's never a time where he doesn't just shake my head and just, uh, you know, puts up with me. You know why he comes to this church? Not because of John. Not because of the elders. Not because of the deacons or the, the children's leaders. He comes here because he loves the Lord. And when he started hearing God's word, it started penetrating his heart. And when he heard that God loves him and he's worth loving, and, and he's had struggles, and we've all had those struggles, at the end of the day, the more he learned from this, the more he started living it. And the more he started loving others with it. John chapter 13 is where we're going to start today. Because that's the example that Jesus gives us. And I want you to understand something here. Peter is about to deny Christ. He's about to say, not once, not twice, but three times, I don't know this man. I've never known him. I have no idea what you're talking about or who you're talking about. And remember that in the group that he is sitting in, he is a Hebrew. And the people that are sitting around him are ready to hang this guy. They know there's something different because he speaks a little bit differently. And so they keep accusing him. And so... Jesus knows that this is going to happen. He also knows that one of the other twelve, Judas, is going to turn his back on him. So right where you sit today, would you rather be Peter that's going to deny Christ three times? Or would you rather be Judas who's going to turn God into the garden? Which would you rather be? And the obvious answer for us is neither. But in both cases... When they lost sight of their faith and they stopped focusing on their faith, who did they turn back to? They turned back to themselves. Judas for a couple pieces of silver, Peter to save his butt. And the bottom line is they lost 
focus on the words of Jesus and what surrounded his message. And in verse 34, Jesus says these words as he's talking to his disciples. He says, a new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, all men will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. A new command. See, you're so used to the thou shalt. Thou shalt not. Thou shalt not. Thou shalt not. And those were needed. And they're understandable. But we're not getting rid of those. Because you guys think the Ten Commandments was actually over 600. Over 600 of them that you got to keep. It's too much for us. So Jesus says, I'm going to sum it up like this. This new command I give you. Love one another. But then he stops and he adds something to it. He says, as I have loved you. And see, when we get to the point where it's about our power and the things that we get to do and have in our way, and it's going to be like this, and you owe me, and I should get this, and how dare you, and did you talk to the pastor, did you get that run to the elders, are you sure the deacons are on with this? When you start doing all those things, we are nowhere near loving others as Jesus loved us. Bottom line. But see, if we can get back to that, this church can do wonderful things. You know why? Because it starts with the individual. When Jesus was talking, he was talking to his disciples. If you consider yourself a disciple, if you consider yourself a disciple of Christ, you will love others as Christ loved others. How do you know what he did? Because you'll start in his book. You know what you do? You'll learn it. And then when you start to read his words and you get the wisdom from Proverbs and you understand the feelings and the emotion behind Psalm, but behind Psalms, you can't help then but to live it. But then the question is, can you and can I then take that out to love others and others with it? This is what Jesus is sharing with them. Learn it, live it, love others with it. These aren't my words. These are the words of Jesus. And these are the words that we want to go from this 2005 document to 2017. Are there going to be questions we have? Yes. Can we make amendments later? Yes. Right now, we have got to change and get focused on this. And the old document doesn't do that. It pits people against one another. Hey, hey, what, what's your role? I'm an elder. Dude, you're an elder? Oh my gosh, this piece of paper over here says that you're like, you're it. Hey, what, what's that guy's role? Oh, he's the pastor. Ooh. Sure. Wait, wait, wait. Doesn't the Bible teach that the pastor is an elder? Well, yeah, but not in our, because we've got this, in our church, we've got this constitution. And so the elders are here, and then the pastors are here. That's not according to God's word. So in the new constitution, there are things that we are going to have to face that this world deals with that weren't even taking place 12 years ago. Transgenders, no discussion. Gay marriage, no discussion. We have to be ready to face these things, and we have to do so by being ready to love others as Christ loves us. Do we hate transgenders? Absolutely not. Do we hate gay people? Absolutely not. But they are never, ever going to know God's love if you are looking down your finger at them and if you're telling them everything that they've done wrong. If everything that you're standing for is thou shalt not. Thou shalt not be a transgender. Thou shalt not be gay. It's easy when it's thou shalt not murder, thou shalt not lie. But thou shalt not live that way. Thou shalt not. Or, the other side to it is, did you know that Jesus knew these same people? And at the end of the day, he loved them because in their mind, in his mind, he realized that they were hurting. You're all hurting. We're all hurting. Our church right now is hurting. It's painful at times. And it's because we have put a document ahead of the Bible. And with the new kind, it even says it in there, the final authority for everything that we do is this word. And the pastor, just so you know, he actually will be on the same level as the elder. 
Because biblically, it's not the pastor that should move up, it's the elder that should move up. We do not move forward without praying over things and discussing things and taking it to Scripture. And recently we had an issue, and it was a very, very difficult issue. It was prayed over, it was discussed, but it never got to come to the elders because it got imploded ahead of time. You know why? Because that's how it's always been done here. Shame on any of us that do that. You know why? Turn to Proverbs chapter 6.
once again, this is me and the elders talking. We do not have a problem with people that want to call themselves members of High Point Christian Church. We understand it's been done that way for years and years and years. We have no problem. If you want to say, I'm a member of High Point Church, that's great. We have one guy that lives over here. He's been to High Point three times in now 28 years. And he is a member of High Point Christian Church. <laughs> three times. People ask me, hey, where do you go to church? High Point Christian Church. Well, yeah, I'm a member there. Oh, how often do you go? Oh, like once a decade. <laughs> <laughs> church <laughs> but he's a member so if you want to have the word membership we're fine with it we don't like the word membership for this reason membership has its privileges i don't know what anybody gives i don't know if you're a giver or not a giver if you're not a giver that's really between you and god in the fall we're going to teach you about how important giving is because if that's the one thing you haven't given to god when you give it to God, you'll be like, well, you know, why don't I just give that to God however long ago? Derek Carr is, a, is, a, is a, the Oakland Raiders quarterback. He just signed a $125 million contract. Would you rather be you or would you rather be Derek Carr right now? Would you rather be Derek Carr? Not because be, you're believers. No, he's a believer too. And the first thing that he did, because they asked him, he said, with the signing bonus he has, I am writing my tithe out to my church. Can you imagine that pass? I think the signing goes like $60 million. The book says, here you go, here's a check for $6 million. He just goes, whoop, pass it down front. <laughs> right? Because at first he's wondering, how many zeros? Are, are, are you sure this is right? That's the first thing he did. So if you're not getting, I'll teach you later. And this isn't because of what I want to get from you. I'm going to show you what God's going to give to you. And a lot of us, that's where our major break is. But as we are moving together in all of these different areas, you have to understand that we're going to face these areas together. But it's still going to come back to what God's Word teaches. And so the word membership and the word partnership, neither one of them are in the Bible. We like the word partnership better. And here's why. I'm going to give you two reasons. Once again, you call yourself a member, call yourself a member. We're going to teach on this once again in the fall. We're going to teach on stewardship. We're going to teach on partnership slash membership. Partnering with someone says, I put my arm around them, and I walk side by side. And we stand shoulder to shoulder. And man, the guns are blazing right now. That's okay, man. We're good to go. We're partners in this. We're going to stand strong. Why? Because... I've learned it, I've lived it, and now it's time to love others with it. But they're shooting at us. They're shooting fiery darts. I got it. They're going to stop. They're going to run out of ammunition. When they're done, we're going to go love them. Membership says, I didn't sign up for this. I didn't pay enough. I'm gone. Right? Hey, this isn't what I signed up for. This whole loving thing, that's a little bit too much for me. Too much of a commitment. Learn it, live it, love others with it. Partnership says, I'm going to walk side by side with you. I'm going to be the same here as when I walk outside these church walls. Because here's the second reason. Someone says, hey, where do you go to church? The High Park Christian Church. Yeah? You remember there? I am, but really, I'm a partner there. Whoa. What do you mean you're a partner? I'm a partner there because every person that comes in, whether it's the guy teaching, or the people on the band, or the guy that's running the sound, or just the people sitting in the pews, we've decided that we're going to learn it, we're going to live it, we're going to love others with it. That doesn't come with the title. It doesn't come with extra privileges. It doesn't come with any extra anything. It just says, I'm going to love others as Jesus loved me. I'm going to make disciples in his name. Well, how do you do that? Through faith, hope, and love. I want to show other people my faith. I want to live the hope that God gives me. And I want to love other people, no matter who or where they are. No matter what color their skin is. No matter how tall or short they are. No matter their gender. No matter their struggles. That's why we chose partnership. Once again, the elders agree to this. I agree to it. This is put before the deacons as well. So if you're stuck on one word, are you really stuck on that one word because of what you've been taught from before? Because there's nowhere in here, nowhere in here, 
where it says that you have to have membership within a church. But man, when I say I'm a partner, no one else is saying that. And I'm just saying I want to walk alongside of you, and I want you to walk alongside of me as we do this together. That's exciting. John, I want to know you're my partner. You've got the coolest hair. I want to know that. Ben Potter, when we're out, we're going to go golfing, I want you to be my partner. He's a teenager. He's funny. He's got a great mind. I can't wait to go golfing with him and my son. And they'll probably hit someone with a golf ball at some point, probably my kid. And Ben will go and follow guys, and we'll get to meet him. Learn to live it. Love others with it. They're learning from us. What is the lesson that you want to take to those kids and other kids and the people that you don't even know or the people in your life right now? And this is the coolest thing. We partner together. And when you walk through that door and you walk across that, across that threshold, you're the same as every broken, struggling person in here. But we're not coming to get beat up. We're coming to lift up. How do you know that? Because I learned it. And now I'm living it. And now I'm loving others with it. Jeremiah chapter 29. If you can turn there, please. This is where we're going to finish for the day. Jeremiah 29. I love you, Maddie. Okay. These verses are very key, but I want you to understand the background to it. And here's the background. Jeremiah was a preacher in modern-day Iraq. He preached for 40 years and nobody listened. Some of you wives right now are like, no, for 45, for 50, right? 40 years and nobody listened. Do you know what he did? He kept right on loving and caring for him. And so the Lord came to him, and these are the words that he spoke to him in verse 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. We all know this verse. Declares. Not an option, not a thought process. I know the, the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. See how that's right in there? Faith, hope, love. To give you hope and a future. Does that mean we get everything we want? No. Does it mean we get every material being? No. Material thing, excuse me. No, we don't. When I was 16, our local golf course gave a car away to the first person that pulled a one that year. And at the age of 16, I hit the ball straight into the hole on a par three, and I never saw it. My three buddies that were with me, they're like, I go, where is it? They're like, it's right at the hole. And I'm like, and I'm like I, what just happened? And it flew in the hole in the air. When you got up, the hole was there, and the little dimples are in the back. And my buddy, whose dad worked for four, was like, dude, you're going to be driving a GT Mustang. And all I thought of was like, I didn't think about my whole life. I'm like, I'm driving a GT Mustang. <laughs> what 16-year-old would love that? <laughs> Some of you think about, listen, let me explain this to you. You get a free GT Mustang. Even you Chevy guys. You get a free GT Ford Mustang to drive. Okay? They take care of it. I'm 16. I, I'm living large. That was the year that the Ford dealership decided to no longer extend that. Well, God didn't have a hope for me. <laughs> That's how some people would look at it. <laughs> because look, I could have prospered with that. Or the other way to it is, man, looking back now, knowing where I'm at, the age I'm at now, holy moly was God protecting me. For those of you who don't know, I've been pulled over in double-digit states. <laughs> I've met a lot of police officers. I thank them for their service. And every once in a while, they come back and give me a paper with their name on it. <laughs> and it's not telling you how much they love me. The last one, when I was in New Jersey a couple years ago, Everyone was asleep, and I was just about for the guy to let me go because of my sleeping family. When my daughter woke up and said, Dad, you got pulled over again? 
And so I add to my list of tickets in the other states. Guess what? God slowed me down. God put the right people at the right time. Me paying a fine. Slow down. And so now, I drive like everywhere I go is a, is a school place. It's a school for 20 miles an hour. That's me driving. No, it's not true. I'm working on my speed limit driving. But God slows me down at times. God has protected me at times. Sometimes that's part of the plan. And when we read this verse, we think, oh, we're going to get everything we want. We don't know what it is that's going to help us the most to love and care for others. But God does. And we need to trust God to be God. Because there's a huge difference in what we want and what we need. And God knows the difference. So he says to us in verse 12 then. Then, so this is the next thing. You will call upon me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. See, too many times we just go, I'm going to do it this way, I'm going to do it this way. This is what the Constitution says. This is what the Bible says. This is what the rule says. This is what the honor. And we never take it to God. But when we realize that God wants only the best for us according to what God is teaching, then we can stop and we can pray and we can recognize and say, man, God, thank you for that. The leadership here, the elders here, we believe in this verse. So that means we believe that God has a plan for your future and that he will bring you that hope and that he doesn't want you to go down a bad path. He wants you to succeed according to his word and his, his plan. So if we believe that, we need to convey to you that we believe that. But the reason that we believe it is because we've learned it. Teenagers, we've lived it. And now we're trying to love others with it. So then we turn to pray and watch what happens in verse 13. You, that's us, will seek me. So you're looking for God. You will seek me with what? All of your heart. All of your heart. Man, but man, I really want to have my way in this one thing over here. God's like, is that love or is that power? Yeah, but when I, when I talk to this person, you know, I'm good with everybody except for this one person. I got, I got to talk a little bit different way. Okay, is that what God says about love? Yeah, just, just God, just so I get my way because I prayed about this and you gave me a peace about it. And I feel and I think, is, it, is that self-seeking? Because that's all against God's word. And yet Jeremiah shared these words from what the Lord said to him. He says, you will seek me and find me when you seek with all of your heart. And he says this, I will, not an option, I will be found by you. When we put this together for the Constitution and the bylaws and the statement of faith, you're going to find scripture after scripture after scripture. Except for the name of the church. The name of the church is High Point Christian Church. We'll capitalize the H, we'll capitalize the P, we we'll put them together. So it's actually one word with two capital letters. Why? Do you know why? We don't know why. That's just how it came to us. I thought maybe some of my mail. We like, we like our looks, okay? But we are going to be a church that at the end of the day, and a church family at the end of the day, that's going to care for every person that comes in our path. We do not move forward, and we haven't moved forward without praying over things and without taking to God's word. And every word that's in there, there are the pastors that have helped. There's one that it broke the line share that I meet with, that I talk with, that I think the world of. There's things in there for every area that we can focus on, and it all comes back to this. And we need to get the power in our minds out and get back to love in our hearts and care for other people. Two weeks you're going to be able to make a decision on it. Two weeks. July 9th. I don't know if there are any surprises. We've been announcing it so that everyone knows. You come in that day, we're going to have a message that's centered around the, the direction that we're taking. We are going to be teaching about stewardship in the fall and partnership in the fall. If it goes through and it passes, Moving forward, you can say I partner with High Point Christian Church. Partner, but yeah, because I want to walk alongside every person that's in the in the pews and in the hallways, and I want to invite other people to come and be a part of that. At the end of the day, 
what our church is about is that we're going to learn it, we're going to live it, and we're going to love others with it. Right, we sit today, if you would just bow your heads and close your eyes.